So, Madge, this is our Travco 1973-270, or 1973-270 Travco RV. Got her about two months ago, month and a half ago. And I just wanted to give a real, let's close the door, real in-depth look. Got all the different features, different parts of the video, because when, we, when I was doing my research on this, I was always trying to find as much information as I could, and there's not really that much out there for this. There's a couple blogs, there's a couple videos of just one or two angles, but nothing really in depth. So what I want to do is I want to take some time and just walk through everything in as much detail as possible. Well, as much detail as anyone can stand. So sorry about the length of the video, but I'm not going to try to edit this down or anything. I just want to give me or prospective people who are looking for information about this car or this RV to have as much detail as possible so they can go into it and understand, you know, what the features are, what to expect, where everything's located and just have more information than I did going into it. So sorry about the length, but that's what this is for. So let's start at the front. This is the 1973. Uh, Traficos came with a couple different fronts, um, but this one came with a bumper. Uh, at least I believe it came with a bumper. Not 100% positive on that, but I have seen more uh, versions of this or more years of this that have this on there. So either there was a really good salesman who marketed to people who had Travcos or it was a factory option. Not sure on that one. Very big sweeping panoramic glass windows. A little dirty, but there's, a, there's also a little crack right there. I'm not sure if you can see it. And there's a chip on one side, but these are really hard to find and are expensive to make, so I'm gonna to try to avoid replacing them at all costs. Big old grill. Let's look at this bay door right here, starting with the, uh, so we've got coolant. Some dry rot happening here. I'm gonna to have to reinforce this frame a bit. Um, it's just a lot of that characteristic happening with this, this car. Um, it's in relatively good shape, but hey, it's 50 years old. Things are going to wear out. Uh, windshield washer fluid looks like there's a little bit of a crack there, but you know, things I'll have to worry about fixing. Um, so let's give that a close. These handles are kind of finicky, but I'm starting to get the hang of it, I think. Can never tell when they're open or closed. Uh, so it's on a Dodge. M375 chassis, yeah, I think M375. So it says Dodge in the front and that's why. Uh, it doesn't say Travco on the front. Travco was its own brand, uh, but they partnered with Dodge to make this. So there's Travco 270. And this one has the olive green stripe, as you can see, makes it look really fast, really sleek. Um, it's all fiberglass. So it's two halves, you can see the seam right down the middle. One half fiberglass, the other half fiberglass, and then they, they molded them together. So that means there's only a, a limited number of places that can leak on this RV. So unlike a lot of you know, Airstreams or stuff like that, it's not riveted together and it's not aluminum. It's all, it's all fiberglass. So oh, let's start with some fiberglass repair that's gonna need to happen. As you can see here, there's a little bit of chipping out fading not sure how i'm going to repair it if i'm going to use bondo or something else uh, you never really repaired fiberglass before so i've got to figure that out you've got your sliding windows wish they opened up just a little bit more um can't quite fit my arm out there while i'm driving but you know hey you got the slanted glass what are you, what are you going to do i think the airstreams with a similar cut from this age but from the 80s had a, a similar gap right there this little door is your it's your foot air conditioning uh, you open these up while you're driving and you get a really good airflow going in there and it works really well it was a very hot day when we drove it back from illinois uh, but those those did okay um, up here is a toolbox i'm not going to open it up it's a little bit fussy but basically there's some spare parts in here um, just lockable toolboxes it's it's not a bad look but madge looks like she has a fat chin so i'm i'm toying actually with moving that from the front the back so it'd be a little bit cleaner and maybe it would help gas mileage but i don't know that's a maybe a nice to have project uh, not as many windows on one side so here's the kitchen right here there is an awning though i am not going to try to open that up 
on video here, one-handed. Nice big window in the back, everything has screens. And here's the generator bay door. Let me open that up. Quick. I can get my keys out. Things lockable, so it's the original Onan generator. Battery's dead on it, and the reason this and this is open is because I was trying to fix it. There is a relay that's not triggering, and so whenever it gets started, it doesn't stay started unless I bypass this relay. Also, it's not putting out any power. So um, the fix I've heard is that you have to get to over here for that, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm going to actually remove this generator entirely and replace it with a mini split air conditioner. Um, in this bay. So if you want to learn more about that, see that project, you're going to have to follow along and I'll share more about that later, but it should be a fun project. Lock this back up so it doesn't fly open while I'm driving. Uh, there's some storage under here. Not very much storage on this model. The thing is lockable, but I don't know, these are, these are kind of flimsy. They're not the greatest in terms of like... I feel confident with putting my valuables, super valuable stuff in here. But I want to say it's about two and a half feet, three feet deep, maybe less, I don't know. But it's not very tall. So you got enough room for a grill and so your, you know, black water um, pipes and stuff like that, but not much more. Also, this one I think is a little bit bent, so it doesn't like to close. I don't think I'll use these too much. Also, there's a rail. This rail right here is for the, the dining table. It comes out and slides into that. But down the leg, and you got outdoor dining underneath the awning. So that's pretty nice. This one was made for, I'm not sure if you can see that in the sun, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Donald J. Rise. So if you know who that is, I lived in Michigan, reach out to us. It'd be cool to say hello. This was... I have some memories on this thing. All right, so here's the back. It's got a hitch that hits on our driveway when we go up, but that's not a big deal, just barely. And then there's this, this ladder, which is kind of dangerous. If you, if you can see right here, this is angled down. So first time I climbed up there, I didn't realize that and I almost I really slipped off and hurt myself, so I, I try not to go up there. I'm not going to go up there this time. I've done it before in video, so it's on Instagram if you want to see it. Um, so gas tank input right here. Uh, this is an aftermarket gas tank. I don't know how long ago it was replaced. I'm, I'm told it was fairly recent. It's a 70-gallon tank, which sounds impressive until you realize that this gets about 6 miles a gallon. So doesn't go that far. Here's another bay right here, and this is where you have your hookups for your shore power, 50 amp uh, hookup right here. And then if you want to hook it up to the generator, this outlet right here, I'll pull this out so you can see it. <clears throat> that outlet right there is actually the power source from the generator, so if you want to hook it up to the generator, you plug it into itself, which is something that confused me at first until I thought about it. I can't do this one-handed, this thing's heavy. Um, yeah, it makes a ton of sense. So, yeah. Oh, 40 amp, 40 amp, not 50 amp. Then you've got your double belted, or double dually tires in the back there. Uh, still belted, so it takes a little bit for it to stop vibrating as it goes down the road, but it's really fun to drive, actually. Uh, I have a blast driving this thing. It's definitely not super maneuverable. And then if you see on this side, you've got another one of those vents. Driver's side, here's your mirrors. And this is not power for the mirror. It's actually a CB antenna hookup. Probably won't use those. So let's see what else do we have out here. If there's anything else we haven't covered. Uh, we've got lockable storage, not lockable storage. We've got storage up there. And then a Coleman generator right next to it, or a Coleman, sorry, Coleman air conditioner right next to it. And there's your TV antenna that raises up and lowers itself mechanically, but 
I don't know, I'm probably gonna take those down. I think it would look cleaner with just smooth top. Get rid of that air conditioning. Not very efficient. All right, so here's the door. As you open it up, screen, door. Pretty straightforward. I've read that this is the original Dead Bolton. There were some executives got locked in with this, so I think this is the recall version. So I think they disabled this because apparently some people got locked into their RVs and had to climb out the windows with their wives. Don't know if it's true or not, but I read it on the internet, so maybe there's some shred of truth to it. So there's the door. The first thing you'll notice as you come in is the unbelievably green shag carpet. All original. Lots of things scattered around here. Some things that came with it, toolkit, all that kind of stuff. But this shag carpet is... <clears throat> we get a lot of comments from people who look at the shag carpet and they say, oh, it's beautiful. Wow, so beautiful. Why would you ever get rid of it? But it's, videos and pictures don't do smells justice. Um, and this car definitely smells like it's 50 years old. Plus we have a Bernese Mountain Dog named Hondo and toddler and another baby on the way and how do you clean it you tell me you can't you can't i mean if you can clean it it's, it's not nearly as good so we may keep we're going to try to keep some corks of it maybe kind of try to keep the engine bay uh shag or maybe some areas up here or maybe make some placemats out of it but it's pretty yellowed pretty stained pretty matted and we're going to make something that is more washable cleanable scrubbable we're thinking something like wood right now so Let's go to the front, let's stay in the front. Okay, so we've got our tray right here that covers up the glove box. Just comes up and sits right on that rail. So it's pretty nice. Here's the driver area. Front and right, or left and right wipers are separate from each other, windshield washers in the middle. There's a panel mat button. Uh, left fuel gauge doesn't work on this one, but that fuel gauge kind of works. It doesn't really, it's not really accurate, but it does work. Got some leveling guides there. Um, RPMs. This is, I just think this wood grain is really cool. So, um, original vinyl. And then you got some fiberglass dashboard right here. And like you said, there's no dash air conditioning. These vents up here and these vents down here are for heat, which you toggle with this. On and off as you're driving and i can confirm they they do get very hot so you get fuel pump right here only works if the power's on speaking of which i don't want to kill my battery okay cool yeah master safety or master switch for power um there's your battery right there uh front seats are in great condition really comfortable actually pretty tall they go they swivel around this one swivels around all the way and this one swivels around most of the way until it hits the until it hits the steering wheel there. And then you've got a not original stereo system with Bluetooth, but you know that's kind of nice. I'm, I'm going to replace it with something I think uh, long term, but right now it's good. I mean, there's even shag carpet in the, the cabinets. They went all out. I've actually seen some models. The Mahal from the 70s this is the trim of the Travco has carpet on the walls and the ceiling and everything. We looked at one. Didn't buy it. That's, I did not want that one. Um, got some insulation falling down in there, but you know, nice little map storage up there or whatever. Lights, we're gonna replace them all with LEDs. And then, um, yeah. So that's what's going on in the front. Step back just a little bit so you can see what that looks like. Um, the ceilings, I'd say, are about six foot one or two. The reason I know that is because I'm six four, so I have to bend over to get in here. We've got cabinets up here, some kind of wiring running back back there, I believe, some kind of conduit. Though I can't be certain; I haven't looked. I'm not sure if these are original fixtures. They kind of look new, but they also have that old look, so I'm not sure. Dining room table. Obviously, this is not an original chair. 
but the um, if you notice most of these if you'll see them they'll have uh, a chair here a bench there and a bench there so um, the benches needed to be reupholstered so we removed them or when we bought them they were removed and we're not going to put them back because like I said we have a Bernie's Mountain Dog and he is really big uh, so we're trying to optimize floor space for him so at night when he can sleep he has the ground that's why one of the reasons we're going to use something a little bit colder because he's if you know Bernie's Mountain Dogs then you know they're really hairy and they get hot so we're trying to make a cool space for him he's a diva we're thinking about him all the time with this close the door um all original cabinetry well, i don't know what we're going to do with it i don't want to get rid of it i don't want to replace it but i do want to kind of touch it up maybe change the wood tone a bit there's our panel um turn on the power let's see oh, master power's off so it doesn't work change that so that does work which is nice Relatively big sink, Good size double sink. Tiny mirror that I can't see unless I bend over. Decent cabinet space up there. It's nice. And then we've got the original propane range. Uh, I, we haven't tested it yet because we haven't put any propane in the tank. Um, we're probably going to get rid of that. And we're definitely going to get rid of this because there's no way that works. And it also takes up a ton of space. Well, I'm sure it works, but whether or not it's reliable and whether or not we need to have something that big, probably not. So storage on all underneath there. And then on this side, you've got the original Dometic fridge. We're gonna replace that, but there's some rust going on. This thing is probably not very efficient. Um, so it looks like this one is gas and electric, but it doesn't really matter. We're just going to go with electric model. Storage up there. And then a pretty decent sized storage back here. So there's also storage underneath there, but it's just floor space. Look at the picture. Okay, so back here, both of these couches do this and do that. So couch, and then you can flip it up. The back, there's, if you, if you notice here, this cushion is two parts. This folds underneath the back part. And then you've got these belts, seat belts, that clamp to the top of the roof. More storage above. And then the, uh, someone on another form was asking how these worked for their model. So it's just basically a little pin that goes between the rail, so it flips up. And there's storage underneath in this front part. The inverter is right back right back here, which we probably won't need anymore once we get rid of the generator. Um, and then there's a wheel well right here. Here, I'll show you that. So the wheel well is right there. You can't store anything under there, obviously. Well, I mean, you got the space to the side, but don't think of that as a giant space. There's a wheel well. I can't do anything about it. Very similar situation on this side, except for... There is the, no, oh, this one's screwed in. What is this one again? Freshwater tank. It's the freshwater tank. So storage goes back there, wheel well, not much room on this side. And then what we're gonna do is try to figure out some netting. Like I said, young, young kids make some netting so they don't fall off. Be a bad wake-up call in the middle of the night and then we're probably going to just slide one of these over build some kind of a railing system so that we don't have to buy a third cushion and get one reupholstered we are also going to reupholster all of these have someone do it professionally because I, I don't think either of us trust ourselves to do that work and like i said they look fine in this video i'm sure if, you, if that's your taste but they don't feel fine they're real rough and scratchy and real the smell is it's pretty severe um and also, they're very thin. Not, not a lot of comfort here. 
All right, going into the bathroom, you've got the original toilet. Not sure what we're gonna replace that with. People say cassettes and all that kind of stuff. I don't know a thing about toilets, but we'll see what we do. Storage underneath the sink. This is actually a really big bathroom storage. A ton of room back here. So it goes all the way back if you can see it. Nice little touch. That's kind of fun, huh? I like it. Um, not sure why this is here. So we'll probably just pull that out and then run the, the walls all the way back because it's extra space. Why Why have it closed up? I don't know. This fell off, but yeah, you can see that. And then the 270 came in two trims. Rear bedroom and rear bathroom. We have the ladder. It's a full size, this is a legit bathtub. I mean, okay, not full size, but it's big. I mean, it's deep. It's deeper than the bathtub we have in our home. Um, and it just really was one of the selling points because with, with toddlers, this is where you can give them baths. I'm not going to try to give Hondo a bath in there, but, you know, we can do that. We can see what happens. Shower is very short. Tapers off. Here's a shower curtain. It's kind of at a curve, if you can see that. It's really interesting. I don't know if we'll get rid of that or not, but it's going to be hard to... I can't find another one of those in that template. And then uh, this window doesn't open unless you pull on this, and that's the uh, emergency exit. So you can get out. Here's a look at the original wallpaper that we got going on here. We're going to try to keep a lot of these quirks. How much of them? I don't know. But we're, we're going to try to strike a balance between modernizing it and keeping it vintage, or keeping it original. Purists are probably going to be mad, but yeah. got to make it work for our family. Okay, water heater's under there. Let's see if I can get a peek in there. Video will adjust. It's really hard to see. Let me see if I can get some light going on. It's hard to get in. Uh, water heater. Oh, that was loud, sorry. Really nice big closet. Oh, it's hot in here. Another closet, and there's the breaker box. There's actually more closet space than I have. But I don't have that many clothes, so that's okay. Um, let's see, what else haven't we seen? Should we start it up? Let's start it up. Here, I'll put you down. Sorry about the shaking. And we'll get started and I'll open up the hood and you can see what that, that's like. start this thing takes a while because we've been driving it a bit today and I've been doing some videos it started right up here we go here's the engine oh. it's kind of hard to open this up sometimes here's the engine say when it first starts it's really loud but once it's been running for a bit and you get the temperature up it's really and, and really a nice sounding engine so what you're hearing there that whining that's really annoying that's the fuel pump it's right about there I'm gonna see what I can do to, to mute the uh, sound and then we're also going to add fuel injection it's one of the first projects that I've got slated for this I've got this kit that I purchased Injection. It's the Holly Sniper Master Kit with uh, high pressure fuel, fuel pump. So, if you want to know about how to install that on a 73 RV, then follow along and you'll see me uh, struggle with that. Um, yeah, let me turn this off. Fuel pump, kill the engine, turn off the power. So, let's see here. What else? 
isn't the most interesting thing to anyone else. I'm not going to try to edit this video down at all. Um, I'm not going to try to do too much to make it glamorous. I'm just going to try to have like a documentation of us following along and um, making mistakes as we go. Understanding, you know, I'm a, not a mechanic. Uh, I have done some mechanical things. I've done some handy things, but I'm just, you know, learning as I go. And I'm hopeful that this kind of content would be something that other people find, vibe, find valuable, either by seeing what I've done wrong and learning from it, or having resources where you can see you know, our thought process. Like, why did we choose something that we chose? Um, I'm going to try to talk about all the different systems that we're going to be upgrading. Um, but if you want to follow along with us on Instagram, our handle is uh, Match the Travco. And then Facebook is Match the Travco. And then YouTube is obviously Match the Travco. If you want to like and subscribe, I'm sorry I'm so sweaty, but it's really hot today. So, oh well. Um, then uh, feel free to follow along, and uh, we're looking forward to showing you what this looks like over the course of the next year. Uh, a lot of projects, not a lot of time, but it should be fun. All right. Catch you later.